The purpose of this video is to discuss the indifference principle as it relates to pages 9 through 11 of the textbook where we talk about rent the farmer, government subsidies, land rent, and the main emphasis on those pages has to do with how government subsidies translates into land rent. And the first scenario we start with in the textbook is a scenario where we have Ren the farmer here. And Ren is someone who could work in the industry or she could work farming. The area of this box right here is cropland. And Ren could work at either one, but she prefers being a farmer. And in particular, she would accept $5,000 less in pay to be able to farm instead of to work in industry. And I put that in there just to emphasize that not everything in economics and the indifference principle has to do with money. Our happiness matters as well. Now, there are lots of farmers identical to Wren, and I have them down here ready to be used if I want. Lots of different farmers. And in, and in fact, Wren's not, not the only one renting cropland. There's, there's other people farming too. Now, up here I have scenario A, and in this scenario, cropland is fixed, meaning there's this amount of land that people can use to raise crops and no more. We're going to assume the industry salary stays fixed at $40,000 no matter what. This assumes the industry is so big relative to farming, people can enter the industry and leave the industry to farm, and it's not going to make any difference to the salaries they pay. There's no government subsidy for farming to start with. There are far more potential farmers than there is land. You'll see why that's important shortly. And farms initially make $40,000 in farm profits before you subtract out rent and government subsidies. And up here you can see I have the benefits to each farmer from farming. And this is on a per farmer basis. The profits before rent are $40,000. We have to subtract out land rent and any government subsidy that might be there, add a value of farming, and then let's just assume land rent right now is zero, and what we're going to find is that the benefits from farming are $45,000. Now this is not sustainable, because what we have here is these people, all of who, whom who would like to farm, they have one of two choices, industry or farming. The benefits from farming are $45,000. The benefits from working in the industry is only $40,000. So everybody wants to farm. And people start leaving the industry to work in farm. You know, these people were over here working in industry, but because the benefits to farming are greater than the benefits to working in industry, they're going to leave the industry to go farm. <laughs> Now we have to think about what's going to happen over here. And, and all of these questions always give you a hint as to what's going to change. And you always change some price. And the hint here is I say cropland is fixed. That's important because if all of these people move from the industry and want to farm, the amount of cropland is fixed. There is no cropland for them to farm. So what they're going to do is they're going to try to come to this landowner, here's the landowner right here, and say, these other people aren't paying you anything in land rent, I'll pay you money to rent land. And we're going to assume the landowner um, will charge as much as they can. And so let's start off by saying that the landowner says, okay, there's people coming here wanting to take over this land and farm. I'll start charging $1,000 in rent. Well, now we come up here to look at the benefits from farming. And we see that the benefits to farming are like this. That now that land rent went from zero to one thousand, the benefits from farming have decreased to forty-four thousand. But that's still greater than the industry salary of forty thousand. So these people are still going to be wanting to farm, and there and not everybody can be accommodated. So more farmers come to the landowner saying, "Look, I'll give you more than one thousand dollars in rent." So now maybe landowner 
they these farmers bid up the price of land to four thousand. Uh, when the rent of land goes to four thousand dollars, then the benefits to farming decrease, and now they're down to forty-one thousand. But that's still greater than the industry salary of forty thousand dollars. And so more people continue to come to this landowner saying, I will pay you more than $4,000 to farm your land. And the landowner realizes that he can charge more for rent. And so eventually people are going to bid up the price of land until land rent is $5,000. And in this case, the benefits to farming are $40,000. And now it equals the industry salary of $40,000. And so now people are indifferent between being a farmer and working in industry. And that is the indifference principle. This shows you in one scenario how the indifference principle works. When people aren't indifferent, everybody prefers one thing. That changes prices. It usually bids up the price of something. And the price keeps going up until people are now indifferent between different actions. And in this case, these people now, um, because land rent's gone up to $5,000, which is no coincidence, equals their personal value of farming. Now, they're indifferent between working in the industry or becoming farmers.